Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Luke, chapter 1. This first Sunday in December. It's normal around this time of year that we talk about Christmas and the Christmas story, Christmas time. And uh, that's what we're going to do today. Luke, chapter 1. I want us to look at verse 25. Luke, chapter 1, and, and verse 25. Luke 1 and verse 25, this is Elizabeth, cousin of Mary speaking. She says, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach from among men. What she's talking about is she was up in years a bit and beyond the age of <coughs> women usually become mothers, and she had no children. And then the Lord sent an angel to tell her husband that they were going to have a son. And his name was John, John the Baptist. Verse 26, and in the sixth month, that is the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, Thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judea. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears the babe leaped in my womb for joy and blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord and Mary said my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden for behold from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed for he that is mighty hath done me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed the strength with his showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich hath he sent empty away. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for blessings. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the clarity of it. Lord, we pray now that you'll direct us by your spirit as we look into your word. 
And once again, forgive us anything that would stand in the way of your working and moving in our midst. Now, Lord, make the message clear and plain. And help us, Lord, to receive exactly what you have for us in this hour. Lord, again, we pray if there's a soul here who doesn't know you as Savior, that this would be their day of salvation. And for those who do know you, may we grow to be ever closer to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that some of the most beautiful music that's ever been written in the history of the world has been written in celebration of Christmas. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But I'm, I'm going to go a step farther and say not all Christmas music is beautiful. Some songs have been written by composers who do not know the Lord and don't believe in Jesus. Well, then why do they write Christmas songs? Well, they have their reasons. And uh, could be a, a number of them. I won't try to speculate on all of them. They write songs, sometimes that have great quality. They may be fun, they may be enjoyable, but they do not worship Jesus. They sing about other things, they talk about other things. And some are not even pleasant to listen to. Now I'm not going to name any because I may name one that you like, so I'm not going to do that. But again, beautiful music has been written to celebrate the coming of the Savior into the world. No question about that. And I think, again, some of the most beautiful music ever written. There's a good chance that you have some favorite Christmas songs. You may have one that is your very favorite. Oh, you like that one better than any. Maybe you're thinking about that song right now. That's fine. That's probably a very good thing. I have some favorite Christmas songs, not just one. I have a number of them. But I want to take a very popular, newer, not brand new by any means, but newer Christmas song and compare it with Scripture and use it kind of as a, a basis for looking at what the Bible has to say this morning. Now, if this is your favorite song or one of your favorites, please know and understand this. I am not attacking the song or its composer. Okay? I, I have no intention of doing that. But the song does ask some questions. And I think it would be good for us to look at the answers. The song that I'm speaking of, the lyrics, at least of it, not the melody, were written by Mark Lowry. And the song has been recorded and performed by many people. And again, in the last few years, it's, it's become very, very popular. Now, there's a question that's often asked by politicians, or asked about politicians, I should say. And the question is, what did they know and when did they know it? That's usually because... Some problem has come up. For example, <clears throat> they asked concerning Richard Nixon, what did he know and when did he know it about the Watergate breaking? They asked about George W. Bush regarding the September 11th attacks. What did Bush know and when did he know it? Uh, that's being asked today of a lot of political figures. You know, what did they know and when did they know it about this problem, that problem, this issue, and that <coughs> issue? Now, I'm not going to get into all that this morning. Uh, don't have time and it's not our it's not our point, not our purpose here. But I want to answer the question, what did Mary know and when did she know it? And I think it'll help us to answer that and I think it's important that we understand. If you haven't figured it out already, I'm talking about the song, Mary, Did You Know? And that song asks many questions. Mary, did you know? And so I'm going to Take the Bible and answer those questions for you this morning. <clears throat> you ready? Yeah. Here we go. First question. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Now, I, I don't know that Mary would have known that particular miracle would occur. I don't find anything that says she would have known that he would walk on water. But I tell you that she did know that he would work miracles. I'm going to share more about that in a moment and show it to you in the scripture. The second question was, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? We're in Luke chapter 1. Look at verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. That is an extremely important statement. Mary is saying here, that she needed a Savior. Now why is that important? Because 
God put that in the Bible because he knew that centuries later people would come up with a story that Mary was sinless. She never sinned. She never needed a Savior. Uh, she was sinless. She was conceived by immaculate conception. And she was never sinful. And that they would pray to Mary and consider her the intercessor with God. But Mary said she needed a Savior. So did she know that her baby boy would save our sons and daughters? She did. Look at chapter 2, Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. This is a familiar passage around this time. This is the night of Jesus' actual birth. How do you know it's night? Well, it tells us so. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. And there were in the same country, that is the country surrounding Bethlehem, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. I imagine so. What a shocking sight. Verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Verse 11, I think, is the most important verse in this particular passage. Here's the good tidings of great joy, which are for all people. <coughs> for unto you, speaking to the shepherds, unto you is born this day in the city of David, that would be Bethlehem, a Savior, which is Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Savior, Christ the Lord. What an important message. Those angels came to give what we call today the gospel and gave it to these shepherds. Verse 12 said, This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of, heavenly, uh, of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see the thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. <clears throat> and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known the saying which was told them concerning the child. Now don't miss that. The shepherds come to where the baby Jesus is with his family, Joseph and Mary and the babe. And what did the shepherds do when they got there? Uh, first of all, it probably was kind of striking that these strange men, nobody probably knew. They might have known them, but that's doubtful. They just showed up. Well, why did they come? They, it tells us that it says that they made known the message that had been given to them by the angels. What was that message? <clears throat> Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Did Mary know that one day her baby boy would save the sons and daughters? She did. She knew. She knew. She knew who this child that she was bearing was. <clears throat> she knew that another. <coughs> she probably knew long before that. Then, the next question is, Mary, did you know that your baby boy had come to make you new? <clears throat> the child that you, this child that you delivered, will soon deliver you? Yes, again, chapter 1, verse 46 and 47. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. She, she knew that. She understood that. The next question is, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to the blind? Mary knew the prophecies of the Old Testament. She had grown up in Israel. Her family no doubt went to synagogue on a regular basis. They were, after all, of the royal household of David. Now, don't misunderstand what I just said. Mary's family was not wealthy. Mary's family did not live in a palace. Their ancestors had lived in the palace. 
but she was of that royal line, and so was Joseph for that matter. And the truth of the matter is, yes, they knew the prophecies that one day, a one who was the son of David was going to come and was going to do these miracles. Well, how did they know that? Well, first of all, look in chapter 1, verse 36. I'm sorry, verse 26. Where it says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, exposed to a man whose name was Joseph, here it is, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly a favored uh, Favor, the Lord hath, is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled and saying, Cast in mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, <coughs> thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Then says he shall be great. And shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So Mary knew that her son was the Messiah. She knew that her son was the Christ. And in Luke chapter 4, take a look over there if you will. And verse 16, just a couple of pages over. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16 says, And he, Jesus, came to Nazareth, this obviously many years later, where he had been brought up. And as his <laughs> custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. It was the Lord's custom to go to the Lord's house and to worship. Verse 17, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, we would say chapter 61 and verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Look what he's doing. Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He had uh, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Did she know that her son would give the sight to the blind? She did. She knew this prophecy. She knew he would preach the gospel to the poor. She knew he would heal the brokenhearted. She knew he would deliver the captives. She knew that he would recover the sight of the blind and set at liberty <coughs> them that are bruised. <clears throat> Next question. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Look again at Luke chapter 1 and verse 32. We just looked at it a moment ago, but take another look at it. Luke chapter 1, verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called Son of the Highest. Son of the Highest means Son of El Elyon, the Most High God. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Yes, she knew that he was the Son of the Creator and King of the universe, the Most High God. Mary, did you know that your baby boy has walked where the angels trod? And when you kiss your little baby, you have kissed the face of God? She did. She knew that. Her son was called the son of the highest. <clears throat> and in chapter 2 and verse 33, again, we were just over there, but chapter 2 and verse 33, it says, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Well, what things are that? <coughs> Look back at verse 25, chapter 2 and verse 25. And behold, there was a man of Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Messiah. God had told this man, Simeon, he was going to live until he saw the Messiah. The Messiah had been promised to come for thousands of years. Now, Simeon was an old man, but he was not thousands of years old. But he had a promise from God that he would live to see the Messiah. 
Verse 27, and it came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus, this is when he was eight days old, to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace. For according to thy word, for my eyes have seen, watch it, thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. Yes, she knew that her son was the Savior. She knew that her son was the Messiah. She knew that her son was the Son of God. Mary, did you know? Next question. That the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the land. Again, she would have known the prophecy of the Messiah. This was a time in history where the people of Israel were all looking for the Messiah. They were all cognizant of the prophecies. And she would have known about Isaiah 35, verses 4 through 6, where it says, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, our God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Listen. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, the lame shall leap as a heart, the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness the waters shall break out, and streams in the desert. Mary, did you know?